Raj, you have a long history, very experienced pilot background, test yeah. pilot background, and you know quite a lot more than most and, and more than most of us. Um, what what is the thing, the, the things that impresses you most with with Gripen? What impresses me most about Gripen is the, if I would say first thing, which is operability. Operability means that you take this aircraft anywhere and start operating from that time onwards. You don't have to wait for anything. Sure, whether it's be to think, and that has to come in design. It's not that you start thinking that today I have an aircraft, I want to deploy it here, there and there and work from there. No, it has to be in the design. And to think of a design which is operable so many years back, you know, to think of that, that we are going to have an aircraft with a braking system, whether aerodynamic, combined braking or whatever, such that we don't need shoot. It's a big design decision, right? And to live with that and to have short landing after that. So that impresses me a lot in the sense and but not only the aircraft but your uh, ground support and the equipment should support mm. that capability right if you have huge ground support with along with that aircraft is not operative but that doesn't serve a so that the whole harmony between the aircraft and the ground support systems is what makes it operable from anywhere mm. you take it from a small strip road anything and mm. your navigation capability has to be inherent it should not depend on external features to land there right whether the navigation aids which are which can be if you have if you am carrying all the navigation aids required in the cockpit then i can land there whether, mm. no matter how it is so the whole design concept of the ground support and thing that's something which i find is quite fascinating from a pilot point of view of operating and you know you go anywhere and operate the ground equipment supports so much limited ground equipment which like for example at one uh, i forgot the name which trolley which can be used from the engine to weapon loading one single thing that's that i think that's quite fascinating in my opinion mm. yeah and, and these capabilities, what uh, what you what you see then that that what will that bring to the Indian Air Force in, in the Indian Air Force operational context? You see, in terms of it's these these requirements are of course uh, not specific to the any Air Force, any Air Force which wants to operate. Let's if you if you uh, operates from different places, mm. right? And you want to operate and go and operate today, let's say from a small airfield like a country like India, which is so wide, widespread, mm. right? New airfield with limited air navigation aids there, with limited, uh, let's say, infrastructure there, right? So that is something where you this aircraft makes you deployable and operable, right? With minimum support system, you can stay there for months. That's what I have seen. Whatever examples have been quoted of me in Europe deploying, doing, you know combat air patrol or something of that sort, those examples in making, maintaining, maintaining high serviceability rate over the time from different places. That's what I find the deployability and thereafter, after having deployed, to be able to operate from there for any air force which wants to have flexibility, mm. right, and, and has a wide uh, range of operation from desert to, you know, sea level to high altitude like 10,000, 12,000 feet airfield, you know, with a smaller airfield, which uh, the aircraft is not uh, FOD or foreign object damage, uh, you know, prone, which can operate from anywhere. And a big logistics things is sorted out when you have a small footprint, go quickly, operate the diameter, and you are not, you know, linked to your parent base for that kind of operation. Mm. That's that, that's something which is, uh, which I find is quite fascinating in terms of if you were to ask me, like you asked me that, like, like deployability, and thereafter, after having deployed, you should be able to operate from there. Yeah, they, uh, what you touched upon is, you know, it's one thing uh, doing it once, uh, but uh, doing it many times in a attritional warfare situation over time, that's something different. Uh, the Swedish Air Force has, you know, from the 60s, uh, operated or uh, in this way from road-based operation, dispersed operation uh, from many places, because uh, the first thing that would happen, obviously, okay. is the massive strikes and with the um, missile strikes would take out the fixed installations. Uh, how is that in, in India? Would it be, how, is that, how would that play out in India? You see, like having what gives uh, this kind of aircraft, what options, basically it gives you an option, mm -hmm. right? And having your options is very, very important in any changing war, war scenario, right? You need to have options to operate it from anywhere and to exercise that option, right? In, in time and then thereafter this aircraft gives you that option to deploy it and to operate it in a quick time i think that's that's very important in terms of flexibility to project air power to project air power in terms of be flexible where to project mm. and 
not being dependent so much on mm. you, okay you can operate from this kind of places or you can you can be there or there it's like you know you will you should be able to mm. deploy and operate from anywhere in a quick time mm. yeah. the the experience this latest experience from uh, has proven uh, or showed that it's important with the mobility and uh, the flexibility operational flexibility uh, as you say, and some platforms can display of doing a road-based landing once, uh, but then it takes a lot of efforts and you need to sweep the runways and uh, then you obviously is quite um, visible that you're going to operate from that place. So uh, being able to do that with a minimum of uh, resources, low legacy footprint, not only uh, with people but also spares and fuel, uh, will have a, a war-winning uh, aspect. Yeah, so that's, that, so that's exactly what my point was, that this has to be harmonized with the aircraft cap air aircraft, you know, uh, characteristics, mm. then the ground equipment characteristics, then the weapon loading characteristics, right, in terms of what kind of, how much time do you take to load the weapon, how much mm. time do you take to refuel the aircraft, you know. So all these things which are, so that's one fascinating feature I find about Gripen is that all these things are harmonized. There's not a single piece which is out of the box. It's like a jigsaw puzzles which fit together and make it perfect picture sort of a thing of deployability and operability.